Greetings folks. In this video I'll be talking about my ongoing impressions with a bit more use with the ANET ET4 3D printer, some of the changes I've made to it to make it more usable. I am getting really good prints out of it at the moment. Uh, there's a little skull that has come out beautifully. No support on that at all. That uh, print's excellent just the way it is. Uh, I've been printing big bolts for some reason. I've, this is a, a design exercise in Fusion 360. I wanted to make bolts that fitted together because none of the bolts I downloaded from Thingiverse would, would actually work. And they are working really well indeed. Really happy with my big bolts. <laughs> I like playing with them. Two different filaments. Uh, but it's taken a bit of time to get there. I have also managed to update the firmware to 1.0. 1.5 I think it is, version 1.1.5. I had read there were quite a few problems with people updating the firmware but all I did was format the card, get a good quality uh, SD card, format it first, put the recommended new firmware on it and it updated in seconds. It was uh, perfect, no problems at all. So now we can pop a, an SD card in and out uh, and you don't have to power it down and up again to get the uh, files accessible on the screen. One of the things I didn't like was that the printer would always retract about 80 millimetres of filament at the end of each print and you had to manually make that back up before the next print. You had to manually sort of push it through and uh, prime the nozzle, whereas the ender doesn't do that at all. It doesn't retract a long way and you're ready to print straight away for the next uh, model. And I also wasn't too happy about at the end of the print the z-axis staying down wherever it finished or down low and then at the start of the next print it would go right up to the top to home then right down again and that would give you the chance of the the filament looping off the spool like that so you could never set the printer going and then just walk away you had to wait until it's heated up and started and made sure it was all working, working okay and the other thing was that the printer bed at the finish of each print would go all the way back as if it was hiding the print. I wanted it to either stay where it was and, or come forward, so it sort of presents the print to you. These are things that happen with the Ender 3. Um, so I looked at the code on the Ender 3, the start and the end code, and made some changes to the start and the end code for the ET4. And now we have it retracting only 10 millimeters at the end of a print. I have the Z-axis going up and homing at the end of the print and then coming down a little bit. I have the bed staying where it is so it doesn't sort of retract back or out of the way. And now at the start of the print I have it printing uh, an ender-like line along the side there to purge the nozzle or to prime the nozzle and then uh, do a skirt as well. So filament is going to be coming out when it starts the print. Uh, so let's try a print anyway. I've got a little uh, print which is just a one millimeter ring. So we started the print, it's heating up now. It does heat up quite quickly. It's very good like that. Something else I've done while we're waiting in for print, you can see I've wrapped up this connection here because that was just bare wires hanging out of, or unprotected wires hanging out of the plug there. So I've given that a bit more support with tape and uh, heat shrink just so that it's not flexing so much with every movement of the, um, the bed. Now these G-code changes, uh, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. You're going to have to work it out yourself because I'm not absolutely sure that it, that it would work for your machine. Uh, I'm not that confident at doing this stuff. I'm learning it for the first time. So this is sort of experimental for me, but I'm, I'm happy with the way it's working. If you want to make some changes yourself, go and look at uh, G-Code. There's lots of information about how to interpret G-Code and how to uh, enter it into your start and end. So everything's homing now, but it's starting from that higher position. Coming down. And after the last print, it has only retracted 10 millimetres, so the filament should be coming out straight away, pretty much. Yeah, that's ex extruding filament now. Doing a little hop across to get rid of it and starting to print the skirt. A couple of wall thicknesses and one millimetre high, so it prints very, very quickly. Now we're returning up and homing.
exhaling and just dropping down a little bit. And there we are. Now the next thing I wanted to uh, address was calibration, getting accurate print dimensions. The first uh, XYZ calibration cube I printed, we got 20 millimetres on the X, 19.8 uh, on the Y and 19.5 on the Z. So this is supposed to be 20 millimetres all, all around. So definitely need some calibration on the Y and the Z. The problem is this is not open source firmware. Uh, so you can't use the usual end of three style methods to calibrate the E-steps. It's very disappointing. I think they really need to uh, provide a calibration method E-steps on the screen or some other method of doing the calibrations because uh, that sort of inaccuracy is, is a bit annoying if you're trying to get things to fit together. But there is a kind of a workaround using the slicer. If you play with the scaling settings in the slicer, the trouble is you have to do it every time you, you slice something, but it is a way uh, to get accurate dimensions. There's a cube after I've uh, made the uh, adjustments and that's 20 millimeters all around. And I'll show you how to do that in Cura. There's the bolt. Now, to calibrate it or to scale it properly, uh, I printed out that XYZ cube, uh, worked out the sort of percentage difference in the X, Y, and Z. X was fine, we need to undo uniform scaling. Y was out by 1% and Z was out by 3%. So, make these changes every time I do a uh, slice using the ANET ET4 and the dimensions come out correctly. I also managed to connect the ET4 to my Mac, not to this notebook, it wouldn't connect to the notebook, whatever I did, but I was successful on my newer iMac, maybe three years old, I suppose this notebook's about 10 years old, so don't know what I was thinking. Downloaded the correct driver, the suggested driver for the ET4, from the ANAT website, or it's actually on the SD card that's supplied as well. It's something like the CH340 driver. And then uh, when you connect the printer, it will show up in a little screen over on this side here in the monitor screen there. It takes a few minutes to show up, but uh, then you can run the printer straight from the computer if you want to. Uh, and that's where you would normally try and uh, do some calibration and, and it just doesn't work. You can enter the M503 command to get all the settings and it just doesn't work. Now if you're brave enough to want to mess with the start and end code, uh, you load your printer here, um, go to manage printers and machine settings here and there you can see a window to insert or read the start code and the end code. It doesn't show very well on my laptop, it's, it's much bigger on the iMac, uh, but that's where you enter the G code to get it to work the way you want to. So there we go, we are getting really nice prints. They are possible, but it takes a little bit more work. I'm not keen on the sort of lockdown firmware, would really like open source firmware, or at least the option uh, included to calibrate, but it's getting very close to working very well indeed. Thanks for watching.